You are watching Access LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the October 3rd, 2022 meeting of the Michigan City Board of Works and Safety. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportecounty.org. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting of the Michigan City Board of Works and Public Safety to order this third day of October, 2022. President or Mayor Dwayne Perry, Mr. Michael Vincent, and myself, Virginia Keating, we have a quorum. The first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular hybrid meeting of September 19, 2022. Are there any corrections to these minutes? I'm here, Madam Chair, motion to approve. I'll second. Call for the vote, Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. The chair votes aye as well. Next item on the agenda is a request for road closure. Robert Buselich, Hoosier, Hoosier Hikers, is requesting permission to host a non-competitive walk and cycling event on Saturday, October 15, 2022 at 7.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Is there anyone here to address that? Good morning. Um, we would recommend approval. Um, all the participants are going to be using a sidewalk and uh, no police overtime will be required. So we recommend approval. Okay. Amber, the insurance in order? It is in order, but it's still subject to permission from the Park and Port Authority who have that on their respective agendas for approval as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, if I, if I could have a question about the sidewalks, some of the maps, it shows areas that do not have sidewalks are it's just a thought. What are the shirt colors? I know these events, people normally hand out shirts. And if these were high vis colors or something that, that might help out with safety or when walking in areas without sidewalks. I don't know that at this time. So I just know uh, our recommendation from Captain Linescu, who's who dealt with them, he recommended that we approve it. So if you need that information, we can find that out and uh, forward that to you. Okay, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Are there any public comments? Any other board comments? Not here, Madam Chair. Then do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve, pending the approval of other departments, the Park <coughs> Port Authority. Port Authority and Parks Board. Support. Then I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Next item on the agenda is a request for street enhancement. Daniel, Daniel Radke, Wake Robin Incorporated, is requesting a street enhancement on the east side of Taylor Street to install curb, gutter, and a sidewalk due to a slope in the street that is causing water into their business. Please approach the mic. Good morning. Would you state your name and address? Yeah, please? Dan Radke, and uh, my business is 508 East 2nd Street, Michigan City, Indiana, Pioneer Pier. Thank you. Yeah, um, my request is, uh, I don't expect any big decisions or anything today, but I just want to bring this problem to your attention to see if it's something that you might be able to help us with. We took the Cating Boat Works about 10 years ago. It was a factory, and then when we got it, it was just being used for old equipment storage. And with Dave Albers from uh, AFS Financial Services, we rehabilitated it. And uh, he's now using it for his uh, accounting office. He's got about 15 or 16 accountants and employees that come in there every day. And it's really been a big uplift to the neighborhood. And uh, one little problem is that it's on Taylor Street, which has not been, um, and believe me, we're really grateful to the city for the black topping they've done and the sidewalks and, and uh, we're not complaining, but uh, Taylor Street's never really had much done to it. And uh, what happens is the uh, slope of the road goes from north, from 2nd Street down towards the creek. And then the black top slopes from the west to the east. So all the water that's captured on Taylor Street goes right to the front door of David's office. And it's not really very good for an accounting office to have an inch of water and it's messing up his carpeting. So I just thought, you know, with the expertise that the city has, maybe they can come up with a solution, maybe curbs, maybe gutters, um, you know, who knows, maybe even a sidewalk or something that would elevate and then hold the water. 
I, I don't think storm sewers are an issue um, because the water just naturally flows down into Trail Creek. So anyway, that's I just wanted to explain that the situation to you to see if you guys might be able to be of some help. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Any questions? Thank you. Um, does anybody want to address this, Brad, or planning, anybody? Good morning, Brad Minnick, Premier Engineers. Um, I worked with Dan in the past, and I can take a look at the property and uh, circle back with Skyler and, and talk about potential uh, fixes there. Thank you. Or the street department, if that's appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. And we can put that on the pending items list. Um, is there anyone from the public who want to uh, come on up, Skyler? Um, you might want to, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to yell. Um, good morning, Skyler York, uh, Director of Planning. We might want to kick it to sanitation too. To, I know that they're dealing with a similar issue down at California, and it sounds very similar to that issue That's with right. trying to figure out how to keep it from flooding. And we did repave that road probably two years ago. Uh, Taylor. Uh, Taylor. Oh, but I mean, we've repaved. We paid second. Street. Second. That's right. So, um, yeah, I, I would ask for sanitation to be uh, probably Steve. It, 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 they're they're pretty good at water issues. Okay, thank you. Good suggestion. Uh, any board comments? Hearing none, then do we have a motion to put this on the pending items list? I'll make a motion to put this on pending list further investigation by Brad and Skyler and Skyler. Or, or excuse me, uh, Brad. Yeah, Brad's taking care of everything for us from streets and sand. Yeah, just Brad is sufficient for moth, Brad. Yes, please. I'll send him a Okay, then I'll support that motion. Okay, then I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry, aye. Mr. Vincent, aye. Chair votes aye as well. Next item on the agenda is a contact renewal. Clarence Halsey, EDCMC, is requesting a two-year contract renewal for the 2022-2024 Professional Community and Economic Development Services with the maximum annual claims for all services per year at $200,000. Does so anyone want to address this? Amber, has this been approved by the uh, council? Uh, with first step. So the council wouldn't approve the contract, they would approve the funding for it. Just That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So there's money budgeted in the Boyd Development Fund uh, for this. Uh, the council hasn't fully approved the 2023 budget. So if this board does approve it, it'd be subject to the appropriation. Okay. The passage of the appropriation from the council. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to make a comment. Please. The activity of our Economic Development Corporation Group in, in conjunction with our planning director has increased dramatically, and I feel this is fully justified. So I will make a motion that pending um, approval by the Common Council that this, this uh, body approve it. Thank you. Does someone from the public wish to speak? Good morning, board. I'm the director of planning and redevelopment for the city, uh, Skyler York. Um, uh, I can't uh, exp express uh, the, I guess the inner workings that we, I mean, that Clarence and I share. We uh, we uh, talk about lots of things daily, um, and, and typically it's economic development related, or it may be downtown development related, or just development related in general. Um, he's bringing lots of uh, opportunities for us. Sometimes we can catch one. Sometimes we have to let them go. Um, that's just the name of the game. But having us working together, uh, it really is. It really makes a really good symbiotic relationship. Um, and it's honestly the way it should work. And that's how other cities that are very strong in getting um, businesses and corporations and development that's how they that's how they function so um we've been trying to um, really create a better relationship uh with the planning department and economic development it just makes sense so and uh that's yeah thanks thank you any other public comments any other board comments i'll second the motion 
Okay, then I'll call for the vote, Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Next item on the agenda is the mobile food vendor renewal for Tommy and Gwen Wilson, Wilson Sam Dunk Barbecue, is requesting to renew their mobile food when I'm sorry, mobile food vendor license for 12 months and will be located in the same location at Captain Ed's 400 East U.S. Highway 20 from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. Is there anybody who want to address this? Morning. Morning. My name is Tommy Wilson, uh, the owner of Slam Duck Barbecue. Just here to see to get my renewal of uh, my permit to go back to work. Okay. It appears everything is in order. Uh, Mr. Wilson is a, a past applicant where he's seeking renewal in the same location. Okay. All right. Is there any public comment? Any board comments? Motion to approve. Second. A call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a special purchase. Sean Smith Street Department is requesting approval to purchase an asphalt hot box with dump under the state QPA plan with Bernath LLC in the amount of $56,84. And I believe you're also wanting to withdraw your previous request for quotes. That is correct. Thank you. Um, I was here at the last board of work meeting and we um, I got approval to solicit quotes for the asphalt, four ton asphalt recycler. But upon further review, I learned that the um, Burnap LLC has a state qualified purchase agreement with the state of Indiana, state QPA. So I, you know, I want to uh, remove the uh, request for soliciting um, bids. Okay. And you've got uh, major contacts with, with the uh, company Burnap? Yes, I do. Okay. And uh, when will this, if we approve this, um, when will this be delivered to you? This will two weeks, approximately two weeks. Okay. All right. And what are you going to use it for? Um, patchwork, small asphalt cutouts, uh, preventative road maintenance. Thank you. Okay. Is there any public comment? Any board comment? I have one, Madam Chair. Okay. If you could explain what's the difference in the quotes you had before and this state, is it state mandated? Well, this is uh, state QPA. Uh, they go out. Sorry. Explain. Yes, yes. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. So the state of Indiana has already bid out um, hot boxes and they pass it along to the municipalities. Therefore, we don't need to follow the requirements. It's a, an exception to the general rule that we have to seek quotes. Um, so that's why they have a special purchase letter associated with it in the Indiana code section that we are using. So the state of Indiana has already bid it out for us. Okay, so it's just a quote process. It's not a pay for process. Uh, we do have to pay for it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You have a motion. I make a motion. We accept support. And I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Benson. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, next item also, Sean, uh, you have, oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's I'm fine. <laughs> Last time we had two for him. Yeah. Uh, next item on the agenda is a resolution authorizing the city special event director to execute contracts in the amount of $5,000 or less for city sponsored special events. Amber, thanks for uh, drafting this. I appreciate that. No uh, the purpose of this uh, uh, document is that we're trying to streamline the process and to unburden the clerk's office. This is a labor intensive uh, task for them. And by doing this, we lift that off of their shoulders and make things move a little bit quicker and more smooth. Okay. Um, do you have any questions? I have a question. It's just, it's the same parameters involved with the vendors that come in. It's just that the approvals going through the planning or the events director instead of board of works. Yeah, it goes to, it goes to uh, Amber. She approves. Correct. So anything under $5,000 um, will be authorized to uh, do small contracts. But anything in excess of $5,000, then it should come to this board. 
So that's that's it's more in line with our purchase policy as well. Okay, same COI coverage, all of those. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, everything else is the same. Any other questions? Then here, Madam okay. Chair. Go ahead, a motion. I'll make a motion to approve support. And I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Next item on the agenda is for informational purposes only. Chief Doug Legault, Michigan City Fire Department, is announcing the resignation of driver operator Joshua Allen with over six years of service on the department, effective October 1st, 2022. Next item on the agenda is a special purchase. Marty Corley, Michigan City Police Department, is requesting approval to purchase body and dash cameras, which include all the necessary software, licensing, and support for a five-year contract in the amount of $1.5 million. Is there anybody going to address this? Thank you, Chief. Chief Campbell, Michigan City Police Department. Um, yes, we think that this is an exceptional company. Um, we had some meetings with them over a year ago, and they offer some things that uh, no other company could offer. Um, very unique situation, as we all know, the issue of body camera usage is very, very important. Um, and this is a cloud-based entity. Uh, we had some issues before with hardware where we had a crash and we almost lost 70% of our data. And this is gonna be a solution for that. Let me give you about four items which make this unique from other entities. And I think that it's very, very important. And I also think that it's important to know that this is the only camera outfit that is approved by the NAACP, especially with all the civil unrest that we had in the past, they looked at what, uh, um, this company had the offer and they decided to approve it. Four items that make this um, equipment unique is number one is what's called the rocket lot. And um, what that is, it, it is criminal justice information services, the video evidence vault secured within the vehicle for both in car and body warm video. When I talk about in car and body warm, we're talking about the cameras that are actually on the officers and the cameras um, that are inside of the vehicles. Uh, this is one of the, this is, this entity actually causes us not to use four different vendors. They have it all incorporated in one package, which makes it very, very unique. Uh, and what that does, it, uh, it helps us to avoid delays in accessing video. Um, it also helps us uh, protect the chain of custody of data and avoidance of unnecessary um, offload docking hardware and associating costs to the department. Another unique thing about this is that it is policy based, both the body warm and the in car video. And what that literally means is one of the issues that we have with camera systems is human error. When an officer gets in a very stressful situation, sometimes he does not put that camera on. The unique thing about this is it's policy based. So this system, when an officer is dispatched to a particular call, it has the capacity to automatically turn on. Say if they're going to a domestic, they're going to a shooting, you don't have to worry about the human error. Uh, once it's dispatched, it can recognize what type of call it is and it automatically turns the car on. And I think that that's necessary in this day and age. We all saw the uh, imperative to have the cameras on when our department was accused of abuse and when we saw the video it proved that our officers went above and beyond what they were called to do and this policy based um, uh, camera system is unique no one else offers that um, let me look at some of the other things it also um, has a speed and signal boosting internet connectivity um, for all of our uh, vehicles and it has an unlimited range for the body microphone. So we don't have to worry about the microphones working or, or not working. It'll always have the range for us. Um, the uh, a second point for us is that um, there is a smart computer with high definition body camera video recording, viewing and classification directly on the device. It has a patented uh, uniform integrated mounting design that ensures secure mounting and stable video connection. 
And it also gives over-the-air policy updates, meaning a device never needs to be docked to receive recording policy changes and important updates to the device firmware. So our officers are dealing with things in real time. They don't, when an update happens, when a policy change occurs, they get that right away. They don't have to wait till um, what the previous system did in the past is you literally had to drive by the station or go on station and then it would download because this is cloud-based, they're getting information real time. Um, a third um, interesting or not interesting unique factor is what's called the Avail Web Evidence Software, uh, which is an automatic vehicle locator. And this is important. We will be able to know where our vehicles are at um, at all times. If an officer is in distress, we'll be able to know exactly where they're at. And uh, it's a very unique feature. With GPS, geofence policy-based recording uh, triggers to activate recordings at major public gatherings, sporting events, festivals, and during emergency situations like active shooting. These cameras automatically turn on. And let's, the, the last unique feature about this, as I mentioned before, is it is the first and only policy-based recording device that can be intelligently activated based upon the industry's largest suite of customizable recording triggers and updated over the air as recording policies available. And I think that, uh, again, that that is very invaluable to our department or any department. It puts us on the cutting edge. Um, also, the cameras are integrated into the vest, and so you don't have to worry about mounting it on and those coming off. They're there. They're not going anywhere. They're part of the vest. And we think that these four unique features make this an invaluable part of what we need for our department now and going forward. So if you have any further questions, we also have a representative online who is available to answer any other questions that you might have. Before we get to that, Chief, why don't you talk about funding for this? Uh, the first $600,000 uh, has already been approved out of the ARPA fund, and that'll pay for the initial cost. Uh, for the first year and then for the following years it will come out of our budget and i believe those costs would be about two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year that's correct okay see that um, okay okay thank you um any uh public comments any board comments i have a couple questions if i could madam chair please do i find this I find this very interesting. And are are we able to turn it on manually, like at the station? If you see something going on, you can anybody can turn on the cameras. That's a, another unique feature. This has the capacity. Let's say an incident is happening real time. We have the capacity to tap into any individual officer's camera and see on station what is going on. So yes, it's a very unique feature, and uh, it gives us real time um, sight in the what's going on on any given incident. Good, and policy-based means we set the policy, we just give it to the software folks and they that, upload. That's correct. We we can have conversation, dialogue, and that's what we really love about this. It, it gives the public some input, our governmental entity some input on what type of incidences that these cameras will automatically turn on. So it's policy-based. So when the dispatcher um, sends for a particular type of calls, this has the capacity to turn that camera on for that officer. It's It automatically comes on. If if an officer gets into a situation that he doesn't expect, he or she mm -hmm. doesn't expect to use the camera, they don't physically turn it on, but things go south real quick? They, they can turn it on, but here's another unique factor with this. If the officer pulls his weapon, the camera automatically turns on. So there's a number of safeguards that go along with this. And if need be, I can have uh, Mr. LaRoe answer any further questions. But yeah, this, this is the most cutting edge technology out there. And um, it takes away the human error part of it for us when an officer gets in a stressful situation. I, uh, when I patrol the street, there are situations that just happen. You don't have time to react to turn that camera on. Uh, and this helps to eliminate most of that. Is there a rewind capture? Are you, once you turn it on, it goes back a minute or two minutes and, and captures that data. Is that a thing? If Mr. LaRoe is on, I'll have him answer that question. I am Chief. Chris LaRue, L-E-R-O-U-X, um, business manager for Utility Inc. 
retired deputy chief, West Lafayette Police Department. Um, yes, we have up to two minutes of pre-record. And again, it's customizable based off the agency's policies and their desire. Very good, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, just one, Madam Chair. Chief, do we have somewhere on file a, a letter from NAACP recognizing and supporting this system? We can we can get that. We don't have it on file. When we met with the company for the first time, they brought city council members and also members of the NAACP with them when they gave us the initial presentation. And that kind of helped us to understand how important uh, this issue is with the community. And it solves a lot of problems, especially when it comes to body worn cameras. I think it would be beneficial to us if we could get a link okay. from the NAACP. Thank you. That shouldn't be any problem. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Do we hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Mayor Coffin, well, Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you. Thank Chief. you very much. Next item on the agenda is a request for road closure. LaShonda uh, Hawkins High Praise Outreach Ministries is requesting a street closure starting at 309 East 9th Street to Pine Street to 2nd Street to Washington Street and return to 309 East 9th Street on October 15, 2022 from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. From, for a breast cancer awareness walk. Okay, we would uh, ask that you approve this. Um, no street closures will be necessary. We've convinced them to use the sidewalks uh, we will provide a couple of EMA volunteers to block the intersections as they across. And even though it's concurrent uh, with the hikers event, um, they had communication and they don't think that there'll be any issues. So we ask that you approve this. Thank you. Amber, is everything in order? Uh, yes. Okay. Sure. We received it. Didn't we? Yeah, we received it. This, I believe early. Did you get the amended one yet? It's a 30 day. Okay, you haven't got the amended yet? Okay. Sorry. You, you need the, it, it needs to be amended. Okay. okay. I thought you had it. I'm sorry. sorry. Before we get to the uh, motion and vote, is there any public comment? And is there any board comment? Uh, I will make a comment, Madam Chair. Uh, just a point of information uh, talking about breast cancer awareness and prevention. There was an article on NBC News Sunday by professionals that, that, are, that have determined that the standard mammogram is not as effective as we've always been led to believe that there is a condition that many ladies have called dense breasts that have more fibrous tissue in them that will conceal the cancer and not be detectable through a mammogram that uh, other there are other testing measures available that are in use that would augment the results of the mammogram and possibly provide earlier detection. So uh, talk to your doctors next time you ha have a, a, a mammogram because it's vitally important, vitally. Thank, Thank you, you, Mayor. I'll make a motion to approve. Support. Uh, contingent on? On the amended COI. Thank you. Then I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Next item on the agenda is a policy change. Todd Tanisha George, personnel director, is requesting to update the city uh, uh, policy number 233, COVID-19 specific protocol and procedure manual to reflect the current CDC guidelines. Um, Amber, do you want to just make a couple comments about these changes? Sure. Um, so when the CDC issued new guidelines earlier this year, I think the city was a little reluctant to implement them. Um, we felt like we had additional safeguards. Um, but as time has gone on, we think that it's uh, viable to use the CDC guidelines now. So this policy would just incorporate all the CDC guidelines. Thank you for that. Uh, is there any public comment? Is there any board comment? Make a motion we approve. Support. Then I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair Rosai as well. Next item on the agenda is the payroll docket for September 23rd, 2022. City payroll of $649,210.43. 
flames docket for October 3rd, 2022, municipal $986,037.83, CDBG $62,563.32, Health and Life Insurance Fund $387,469.99, special events $11,000. Uh, $17.88, LAF Barker refund, uh, EFT, $377,502.18, double tracking sinking fund, EFT, $357,502.06, Ohio Street Project Operation, EFT, $565,612.52, Ohio Street Project Sync Fund EFT, $1,890.90. Ohio Street Project Debt Reserve EFT, $56.49. Elson Grove, uh, 200, I'm sorry, 2021 sinking EFT, $124,000.26. Total claims, $2,000,000. $873,653.43. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve as read. Support. I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Next item on the agenda is the unfinished business pending items list. First item is uh, Tommy Kalavik, 1316 Ohio Street, was requesting restriping of Ohio Street from 11th Street to Garfield Street. This is to be revisited today because we were wondering whether or not there would be mm -hmm. approval from the um, ARPA fund in the Common Council approval to purchase uh, our striping machine. Do we have any information regarding that? Good morning, board. Um, it's been determined that uh, we actually look into uh, acquiring a paint machine, but we believe with speaking with um, our city engineer, Mr. Minnick, that it would probably be more feasible to like take inventory of our selected streets and maybe contract it out. Okay. All right. And so are, are you in the process of doing that? Is that going to happen now or later? Brad? Good morning again, Brad Minnick. Um, my recommendation in, in doing so was also to couple the pavement striping with the community crossings grant that uh, Mr. Doyle was in charge of. And okay. I apologize, I don't have an update on that. Okay. Um, so I can check in with John and, and see if that, uh, where we're at on that. And have an appreciate update that. We'll just keep this on the pending items list then. Thank you. Uh, next item is uh, Gail Nylib, City Clerk, requesting clarification on the HDD, that's her right, horizontal directional drilling policy. There was a meeting on this. I believe it was a September 19th meeting. And I think that there's a work in progress as far as the uh, anticipated changes to this policy. Um, Madam President, yes, I've worked on the changes. I've submitted them to insurance. They're assisting me with the proposed bond language, and that's what we're waiting on. Thank you. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, how long would you like us to keep us on? Um, just do next meeting. I'm okay. hoping. I'm right. hoping. Leave it on then for the next meeting. Thank you. The next item is uh, Councilman Don Presbolinski addressed his concerns regarding the purple lights, Franklin and Cleveland Avenue. There was a letter that was supposed to go out on this. Has that letter gone out? Thank you. Hello, Board. Christian Gelsky, Mayor's Office, Michigan Thank City. You. Uh, just to let you know, a letter was sent out by the mayor to Mr. Kalinsky, the regional director um, and engineer for the project for NEPSCO. He then turned it over to Ms. Conlon, Denise Conlon, who then sent out another engineer to um, look at the lights at, in the evening time. It was then determined the lights do not belong to NEPSCO, they actually belong to the city of Michigan City. These lights were contracted in 2018 by our city council. 
And then um, it was purchased through ESG Corporation. ESG then contracted FSG for the materials which supplied the actual lighting. And then it was put in by locally um, by Andy Skiat from Marcus Electric. So they did the labor only. So I'm in the midst of all of this trying to get it all figured out. Tangled web. Okay. Councilman, did you want to make a comment? Uh, well, I guess uh, Councilman Don, Prince Polanski, 215 Gardena Street. So with uh, Mr. Yugelski's explanation, I was just trying to put it all together there. I, I think what he said that the city owns those lights, and that the city's responsible to fix all those lights now, 60 of them or whatever the, the amount is. Well, at least we got to the bottom of that to see who owns the lights. It's not NIPSCO, it's Michigan City. And, you know, I was always asking for the uh, possibility of a rebate on the electricity that was going to those lights, but that's not gonna happen now because it's our issue. I just wonder if now that we're at this point, if the parts or the part that malfunctioned to cause these lights to become purple is under some type of warranty. I don't know. I don't think anybody really knows that. I'm trying to find and, that answer for you. Pardon? I'm trying to find that answer for you. Great. I mean, not only for me, uh, Ms. Lope Ms. Lopez, but, yeah. you know, the whole city. Well, ESG at the conclusion of the project dropped a big box of manuals off. And mm -hmm. I think the clerk's office has it. The planning department has it. But I went through the manuals and there's actually a section for warranty information but it doesn't give you information. It just says standard manufacturer's warranty. So I've reached out to ESG and I've asked for what specifically is the standard manufacturer's warranty on it. So hopefully I'll get a response from them, but I reached out last week. Okay, all right, thank you, mm -hmm. all right. And I think the other thing that we're, we're tentatively working on is, is if we are stuck with the cost, what is the cost? Thanks. Next steps. Well, next steps is we're looking at costs. Um, I think, Chris, you were exploring what the cost factor was going to be. Um, I'm also exploring the warranty factor. Sorry again, Chris Yagelsky. Um, as I explained, Marcus Electric was originally contracted for labor only. They're going to give me a guesstimate at this point to see what it would cost to replace all the lights. Although we're still going to look at the FSG portion of it, who actually supplied the lights to SG, and then see if there's the warranty factor. So again, a labor side of it and the part side of it depends which they'll cover. And kind of we're still in the midst of this. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. Amber and uh, Chris. Appreciate all the work you've been doing, been doing on this. Um, we'll leave that on the pending items list. And I have a question on that, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Uh, just curious, after new light of historical facts on this, did we sign off? City, city Council, I don't know how that process works. City Council hired this to be done. Is that how that works? So, Mr. Vincent, this project was... Um, the Indiana law allows for energy saving projects, and it's a special, unique circumstance where the council actually gets to oversee it, approve the contract, and do everything. Nothing came to the Board of Works. So it's one of those unique situations that really doesn't exist except for the statutory creation of it. So it all went through the council and all the contracts and everything. So, so there was nothing at the end that whoever, Marquise Electric or ELP, whoever it was that put it up, said, city, we're done. Do you approve of the work that we've done? Can you sign here? There is. There was. <laughs> but it didn't come to this body. Okay. Correct. All right. Okay. And I, I believe the acting city engineer at that time also was involved in signing off on it. Madam Chair, if I may, uh, just an informational point based on my experience in contracting, uh, issuing and administering contracts for the federal government in a situation like this, the responsibility is what they call a flow down. 
Uh, Mark, we have no responsibility. We are only the customer. We only bought them. Mark is electric has no responsibility, but that's a channel you go, Mark. They have no responsibility. They were installer. Yes, the, the, the responsibility then picks up to the provider ESG and it would flow through ESG to the manufacturer. That's where the buck stops. So to me, it's with ESG and the manufacturer to uh, provide replacement of those lights. Thank you. Um, as I said, we'll just leave this on the pending items list and see what shakes out. Um, the next item on the agenda is Perry, uh, Carrie McGinty, 225 Charles Street, is requesting to purchase property owned by the city of Michigan City, located behind their property at 932 West 6th Street. Um, we have uh, all received, I believe, a, a letter from uh, Attorney LePage Stallbrink regarding this matter. And she's made certain recommendations in this uh, letter dated September 28th, 2022. One of the first is that she has informed the board that we need to be setting a uh, offering price for this property. Um, and the recommendation is that we set the price no less than $1,675. Is that correct? Yes, Madam President, we did have to spend money getting the appraisal and also the legal description. Um, so I would ask the board to take that into account in those expenses. And that's why I said no less than $1,675, which would also cover um, any of our recording fees as well if someone does decide to uh, purchase this property. Okay. Uh, before we go forward with a motion, there's also some information that we need to uh, address, and that is that under uh, 36, that's Indiana Code 36, 1-11-5-D, this board needs to make a finding, and the following are the findings that the board will need to make, so we'll include that in our motion as well. Uh, the findings are the highest and best use of the tract is to say sale to the abutting, uh, I'm sorry, is sale to an abutting landowner. Uh, B, the cost to the public of maintaining the track equals or exceeds the estimated fair market value of the tract, or in addition, um, it's economically unjustifiable to sell the track under section four of this uh, chapter, which would require that the city obtain two appraisals for the sale of the land and the city could not sell the land below the lowest of the two appraisals. So based on that, um, it's, I believe, Amber's recommendation that we probably have, uh, a we would qualify on all of those items, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So uh, I need to, uh, I'll entertain a motion for two things for the um, setting the price for the sale of the property and also uh, fi a finding that under the section uh, 36 1 11 5 D A through C, that uh, this property should be sold to the abutting property owner. So moved. Support. I'm sorry. I had to go through that. A lot. I could never. <laughs> okay, I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair will say as well. Legally, we have to do all of that. Jump through those hoops. Okay, uh, the, the next and last item on the pending items list, Councilman Don Presbolinski addressed the board with concerns from the public uh, regarding the traffic islands by Blue Chip Casino. Uh, Brad has been talking with INDOT regarding this, and my understanding is that they said that they would repair them as soon as they could. Is there anything more you can tell us? The repair has not yet been done, so I'll follow up with them again um, and see if it's still on their pending list for this this calendar year. So if you could leave yeah, it. Yeah, because we're getting into we're running the out of weather, yep. the ground's going to freeze, and we won't be able to get it done. Definitely. Yeah. So um, I'll have a update at the next meeting. Thank you. I appreciate it. Question for Engineer Minnick. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Minnick, would you say it's a safe to assume that they will be changed out by the time the snow flies? Because the snow plows use those, right? Right. For guidance. So those are less 
temperature sensitive than the pavement markings. Um, his commitment to me, Alan Holder Reed from Indot's commitment was to get it done this calendar year. So okay. that's that's what I'm working off of. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, as I observed uh, those traffic islands and the, and the issues that I brought to the board, I've seen where uh, the markers, safety markers have been replaced in certain areas. And I know that for whatever reason, people must like to uh, knock these things down at two o'clock in the morning when they're driving, but continually they're getting knocked down here and there. Yeah, and Brad probably knows the, uh, the issue. But anyway, I've seen them repaired, then I've seen them knocked down again. So if Brad is gonna continue on to uh, get them fixed before the snow flies, that'd be, that'd be great. Yeah, and just to respond, as far as the, the lines, and I know I spoke about the lines, uh, yellow lines on Highway 12 uh, and around those islands uh, being faded out, that those have all been repainted all the way from Highway uh, 212 out to uh, west of Michigan City, out into the Pines. So I know that that's been completed. So I don't know if they have that on their completed list yet with the safety barricades, but hopefully they will. But I know they're getting they're getting better. I'll say that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, both of you. This concludes the business portion of this meeting. Uh, public comment, just let me define public comment. It's uh, reserved for matters that do not require board action. Any matter requiring board action will not be discussed under public comment section of the Board of Works meetings. All matters that require board action must be placed on the agenda using forms and procedures available at the clerk's office. Also, public comment is limited to three minutes. All comments should be addressed to the board president, not to individual board members. And all comments must be germane to and within the mandate and authority of this board. That being said, I'm open for public comments. Anyone wishing to make a comment? Kathy Stransky, 223 East Park Graph, here in Michigan City. Okay. Um, my, my public comment is that I have had a problem with the shooter um, behind my house. I did get, I did get um, patrols and I did get some help and he left. Okay, he was gone. Saturday morning, he came back. And there was shooting Saturday afternoon. Now, I don't know what we can do. I would like to ask for a light to be put on the back of my garage to shine in his yard so at least we can see where he is. My light would overflow the alley and into the back of his yard where I could at least see where he is. I have actually seen him shoot. And it's scary. And I don't want to move. Now, we went. We went for, for several days while he was gone. We had no commotion. Saturday morning, he's back. Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock, we have shots. I don't call the police all the time anymore because by the time they get there, he's gone and, and it's over. You're in luck. We have uh, Chief Campbell here. Can yes. He, could you come up, aware. And, and maybe address this before the board, please? And Kathy, you need to go down to the clerk's office and uh, do the documents for the light, okay? Yes, we acknowledge in our city um, that we have challenges with shots fired. Um, it is not unique to Michigan City, but we've seen an increase in shot fired uh, nationally. Uh, one of the things that, that I have said, and I don't minimize Miss um, Stransky, her complaints at all. I actually went by to see her, um, went to her home. Uh, Councilman Presblinski has given me calls. Mayor Perry has given me calls, and we're not ignoring her issues. It is a very difficult thing to deal with shots fired. Uh, once they happen, our officers come to the location, and you can't get a, 
an exact location of where the shooter is and the evidence unless you can find shell casings is very, very difficult. One of the things that I've always said is that in order for us to combat what is happening nationally and in Michigan cities, it's going to take an effort between not only law enforcement, our government officials and the community. And uh, we've held some community meetings regarding the uptick in violence and also the shots fired call. And uh, um, everyone has agreed, the community has stood up and said that they're going to take responsibility on their part. Um, they know that in the past they have not given us information. I think that our governmental officials have looked at the situation and they have decided to resource um, some equipment that is not a solve all, but it is a resource. And we will soon be implementing the flock system and a raven system to help assist us with, with this. So it, it is a viable problem and, and we're not ignoring the issue. We're, we're digging our heels in, but it is very challenging to deal with those type issues. We're also taking a step further um, with some of the shootings that have occurred in our city. Um, I just got out of a meeting yesterday and we're gonna bring in an outside arbitra uh, an arbitrator to come in and deal with some of the families. We're actually going to pay for someone to come in and we've identified some of the families that have been going forth uh, with the shootings in our city and they're going to sit down with them and begin to have conversations. And we think that this is a better way to deal with the root of the problem. It's not a guarantee, uh, but we're looking for solutions. And, and I believe that we're heading in the right direction, uh, working with our government officials and working with the community. We've had community meetings uh, maybe three of them, and we've discussed these issues. And uh, I, I think for the first time, we've all come to a place where we know we have to work together to deal with these issues. That, uh, And again, I'll repeat, they're not just Michigan City issues, they're issues that are plaguing our entire nations. What we're dealing with is a heart problem, and there's some other contributing factors that have put in or have set in motion what we have today. Uh, but I think all of us working together, we have some tools uh, that we're going to put in place to help us combat these issues. Okay, uh, you know, Chief, you're talking in general, in mm -hmm. general, all across this country, we got problems. Right now, we're dealing with a very specific problem. Mm -hmm. And this lady has been here mm -hmm. at least four times. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? At least four times. Mm -hmm. You have a specific problem. Mm -hmm. It's no question that you need to address it and it needs to be addressed now. I'm not your boss, okay? Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you something. Mm -hmm. If if I were that lady, I would be going to the to the newspaper and I would be screaming bloody murder. Mm -hmm. It has to be addressed. Those people cannot continue mm -hmm. living under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't put up with that, would you? No. Okay. I would. Did you say something about having seen the person shoot? You actually, you had a, you got a witness there. Okay, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. else do you need? Madam Chair, and I'm not disagreeing with you. When Miss Stransky said she saw the shooter, uh, Kathy, were you able to make facial recognition? Sure, that's, that was my neighbor. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I take that back. And I thought that you just saw mm -hmm. somebody doing a shooting. The way I would approach this to try to help is if the and we've had this problem in the past with drug houses we can and the chief and i've had mm -hmm. too many conversations about this we can go in and we can arrest the people for nothing more than possession we've got to get them dealing and how we do that is we we go if i can get code compliance in there we can get them evicted by the landlord we go after the landlord to evict them and that takes, at least it takes care of the problem at that location. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we do have to, um, did, did, Kathy, did anybody else see the person? Because otherwise it's your word against theirs. Well, most people don't get up at yeah. the morning. Yeah. yeah. I think it's time to solve the problem. Yeah. I, I think that it's gone on too long as it is. Do you have any comments? No, I, I guess I, I'm just taken aback that I agree with Madam Chair mm -hmm. that how many times are we down here? Now we're learning that we, we know who the perpetrator is. Yes. Do we know who they're shooting at? Is it target practice? Is it somebody yeah. that they're shooting it, at? It is sometimes a car and mm -hmm. sometimes they are on foot. Mm -hmm. we'll yeah. Go to the... Go to the mm -hmm. Sometimes it is a car, 
and sometimes they are on foot. I also want to remind this board, and, and I know that Deanne knows, I'm within 300 foot of a school, a grade school. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I'll say we have to work within the parameters of the law. I believe that the person that she's referring to has been arrested and released. And that's one of the things that we have to deal with. Our officers have been diligent to arrest people, uh, but the way our laws are right now, people are getting released the very next day. We've arrested people for some heinous crimes and they've been released back on the streets. And so we, working under the parameters of what the law allows us to do, we are doing our jobs, uh, but we have a lot of circumstances that, you know, the criminal justice system is not just us making arrest on people. There also has to be some type of consequences when they are arrested. And uh, I think that there's a more complete picture than, than just what are the police doing? We are doing our job, but um, uh, it's very difficult uh, when people are shooting guns and they get released back on the streets for the crimes that they've committed. I understand. Uh, do I have your word that you're going to work with uh, Kathy and I'm, try I'm, to resolve this as soon as I'm, possible? Like I said, I've already contacted her. I've, uh, our officers are aware of what's going on. They've been sent an email about these issues and we are doing that now working with the councilmen uh, to do everything that we can do within the parameters of the law. Councilman, did you have something you yeah, say? Excuse me, Chief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what it, and I feel strongly for Kathy Stransky in the issue she's got going on down there, and not only her, but all the neighbors that live in that block. It makes, and, and I agree 100%, Madam Chairman, that if that was going on in my neighborhood, I would be sitting in front of the police station every day waiting for the chief to get there. And then we'd go down there and sit in that neighborhood because I wouldn't put up with it. I told Kathy not to do that and to call me anytime anything like that happened. And yes, she has the right to come down here to board a works meeting and express her frustrations with something like that. And she always has the right to come to the city council meetings and express her frustrations. And anybody in the city has that legal right to come and express their frustrations when they don't think what's being done is enough. Now, she's asking for a street light. Whether that's going to cure the problem or not, I don't know, but it may help. And I know there's been other people that have come to the Board of Works and asked for street lights. And boom, street lights are approved and the street lights are up and there's no questions asked. Here we actually have somebody that's got the proof that there's shootings going on. City planner, he told me that he heard the shots in our discussion we had back there on Saturday afternoon. That was He lives two blocks away or a block away from uh, Kathy's house. So it's going on. So let's... Let's put the street light up. Let's see what happens. And if we need a camera to identify somebody in this alley or in that neighborhood, then let's put a camera up. We put cameras up all over the city. We're talking about this flock system, which is gonna be a some type of camera initiated type program. I mean, if we got that type of activity going on in somebody's house, and you can see that Kathy's very distraught, and she's been very distraught, for a couple of months now, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to the board members. I know that and, and everybody that's here that we should at least try to help out, get a street light there, put a camera in that alley. And if we find them, fine. If they go somewhere else, well, eventually, hopefully they'll get caught and we'll get them off the street. Thank you. Thank you. Board comments. Well, Madam Chair, I'll make a comment. I think the police are, are doing all they can with the troops they have. Um, they don't have enough men or women to stake this out. And I, I, I will say that either one or two shootings ago, I can't remember which, uh, Kathy called me at 2.10 2 a.m. and I answered the phone like 1.10? No, two shootings. 
two shootings ago, 2 10 a.m. And I called the police department right away and an officer was dispatched. So I will say it in terms of, of we have we have uh, certain restrictions in government that um, are very handcuffing at times. So I will say that I will guarantee that we will put a street light up in that alley if I have taken out of my own discretionary fund. Okay. You have any more questions for me, Ms. Kidd? I do not. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. And, and let me reiterate, I live in Michigan City and I hear the shots fired as well. And it is very disturbing to me. And trust me, we are doing everything lawfully that we can do to combat this, but it's not as easy um, as you might think it is. We always have to prove those facts. She could see a shooter, but we have to find a gun. We have to also find shell casings, and that is not always easy. So uh, uh, again, we are not minimizing um, her issue. I have the same issues, and, and we're doing everything that we can to combat the, uh, what's going on in our city. Thank you. Okay. Okay, as far as, go ahead. Scarlett York, actually live at 320 East Homer Street, um, a block away. Uh, I had a buddy over the other day, Saturday, not trying to belabor this, but, uh, you know, we're in the backyard cl literally cleaning my canoe. That's what we're doing, getting prepared to go on a canoe trip. And, uh, you know, I just want to make sure that Kathy's not just some lady who comes here. It really is the real deal. I mean, that was a shot. I shoot guns quite often. I grew up, you know, the way I grew up and my buddy does too. And uh, definitely not fireworks. Those were definitely gunshots. And um, it was a little disturbing. He was a little unnerved too. Um, but I, I know it's a wicked problem and I know it's a problem that's tough, you know, to deal with. Um there's a lot of things going that are there that contribute to that, you know. Um, but I just want to make sure that uh, that I don't know. It, being around the school and seeing the kids walk to school every morning, it really unnerves me to know that we're having shootings so close to that school. That that's the real thing that bothers me the most. Um, and they're out there playing on Saturdays. They go to the playground and play. So 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 it is a little. It, it's actually very disturbing. So okay. just want to add that to it. I know Chief's working hard on it, and I know it's a tough Certainly. problem. Certainly, yes. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mayor. Are you making a motion to uh, include uh, installation of a light and perhaps a camera? Is that your motion? At this stage, I I don't I don't know the the. Uh, I'm just pausing on the cameras because if you're talking about the flock and raven, it has to be in conjunction with yeah. the um, the vendor because we have to make sure that there's ample power and everything. So the vendor has to be involved in any of those. That's why I'm hesitating. Um, but I no, I wasn't making that motion for a camera because okay. I, I don't know. Right. I just the extent of my uh, my funds. I, I I do have enough funds, I believe, to in discretionary funds to install a nice bright light uh, right in that area because it's it's a pinpointed area. It, it's a it's a right by a garage in in, in the alley behind. Do we camp. know the, actually where we're going to put the light, or do we need we'll to have that out. go out there? Brad, we'll, you need to go out there and take a look at that. I'll, I'll get the full number and uh, get the light. App. I'll work with her to get the light application. For the next four words. Thank you. Thank you. A, a, a question if I, for, for Ms. LePage Stallbrink, if I pay for this out of my own discretionary funds, does it need to go before the board? The board approves the installation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It, but I'm also, but I'm also assuming that this is, is, is on city property. So that's a light that's already existing in our alley, correct? The alley. Yeah. It's, <clears throat> Sorry, I've had to deal with these quite a few. Um, you would install the light. The Board of Works will approve the installation, but then you'll also need to get approved by you guys because it'll go on the, the it'll be added to our light inventory as well. Just okay. so you know, so okay. yearly the yearly charge of that light. Okay. 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 Your motion is to install a light in the alley behind and put it on the pending items list. Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. Second. Okay, then I'll call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Henson. Aye. Chair of both sides. Well, thank you very much. Um, board comments? 
Uh, just a public safety, couple public safety announcements, if I may. Uh, updating <clears throat> street closures and what's open on the double track. Currently going from uh, west to east. Uh, we have Tennessee and Washington open up on the west. Franklin Street is open. The center of town and on the east, Lafayette is open. Uh, two other items. Let's remember the kids boo at the zoo is scheduled. It will happen this year, October 22nd, October 22nd, which is Saturday, 1030 a.m. to 5 p.m. And trick or treat has been set for October the 30th, the Sunday, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, and anything else? I, I would like to, Madam Chair, clear up any misconceptions that the Board of Works is not here to help. The Board of Works is here to help. We do have a process and a councilman that just left, he knows that process to, to go down to the clerk's office and fill out a request form. And what that does um, is allows the people that works behind the scenes with the Board of Works to go out and do the investigations. You, you just heard Brad, he, he's very good at going out, looking, capturing poll numbers and doing the background work so that our, at our next meeting, we can approve it and then quickly a light goes up. So it's not just willy nilly that the board comes to a meeting and decides to put a light up or or just undiscretionary as it may seem to some. But if the light, if if the light does solve the problem, I'll be great. That'll be great. I'll be happy to know that. But I'll also be a little unsatisfied that you were not informed that we could do that months ago other than than continuing to come down here if the light idea came up too late don't blame the board that that we don't approve lights but but as you see it, we're willing to work it, and i don't think we've denied any lights that have been on our agenda but the important thing is and, and i'll address this to the general public the important thing is to bring your request prior to the meetings so that we can do our background work and our background investigation so that at the meeting we can approve and move on and that just saves a delay for anything that you're requesting at at minimum two weeks between meetings so i'm by that you mean going down to the clerk's office and filling appropriate documents that is correct and gail and and her team down there they're, they're very nice people they're easy to work with they'll help you through that process and it's nothing too difficult to fill out you'll, you'll be in and out five ten minutes so i, I urge everyone in the public to do that um, before the meetings if, if you have a, a request for us to address to please get it on the agenda Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Do I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Support. Call for the vote. Mayor Perry. Aye. Mr. Vincent. Aye. Chair votes as well. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.